All right, everyone, we've got another red flag law based uh, story that we've got to talk about. This time, uh, one of the dudes from the Adam Waffen actually getting his gun seized. Apparently, he had quite an arsenal. Like, you know, it wasn't just like daddy's shotgun sort of a deal, it was quite a lot of weapons. Uh, I'm going to say this first and foremost. Again, as someone who doesn't agree with, <laughs> certainly, especially that side of the ethnonat situation, the idea that the Second Amendment is magically suspended because an individual's belief system happens to be what the average person would consider kooky or suspect is clearly wrong. It's also, I don't think, long-term going to hold up in court, much like after years and years of abuse of the population prior to Heller versus DC, McDonald versus Chicago, in some of these landmark gun control cases that have shown no indeed the federal government does not have the right to convert the Second Amendment into a privilege. It's a right specifically, among other things. Um, certain bans on accessories have been smacked down in Texas. Hell, they've basically gotten rid of all existing gun control that's not on the federal level. In the wake of some of these cases, what people are faced with is a situation where in, sometimes entire generations of people were deprived of their constitutional rights. And only later, because it was a big public issue thereafter, did the Supreme Court end up weighing in on it. Right now, I think there's reluctance at the highest levels to address red flag laws. So even though I think that the, the Adam Waffen idea uh, of militarized ethno-nationalism is regrettable, and I don't agree with it, the idea that a U.S. citizen loses their Second Amendment rights because of that is crazy. That's like saying, look at some of these anarchist groups, including Antifa. Antifa has gone out, and they've started purchasing weapons. BLM has delved into this. Uh, other left-wing groups over the last couple of years have increasingly become socially alienated. They're, they've convinced themselves fascism's coming. Some of these groups that were very anti-gun before, because a lot of these people are just Democrats or, or left-wing, and they've been told by other left-wingers, gun's bad because think of the children, have embraced the idea of, of taking up arms in order to, in their minds, defend themselves. I think that that's wrong. I think that that's kooky. I think that the idea that Trump represents a fascist danger is crazy. And by the way, self-proclaimed fascists ironically would agree, would agree with this and think that he's a cuck or a sellout. That doesn't mean they should be disarmed. It doesn't mean they can be. That's the other thing. Why are we always talking about our opinions on who should be disarmed? That's the wrong conversation to be happening. Nobody should be disarmed. There are a very small set of legitimate criteria that our founders would have imposed at the time, and did, by the way, that would prevent a, a normal functioning adult from accessing weapons. If they are a violent criminal, they would have been considered a lunatic. A criminal lunatic cannot reasonably hold a gun any more than they can vote, any more than they can be allowed to sit on the street corner and talk to other people in the normal First Amendment sense. Their right to privacy is also additionally denigrated. If a person has become a ward, a person is psychotic, they're in a psych ward. Their Fourth Amendment rights are semi-suspended. I mean, you still have patients' rights, you still have basic human and civil rights, that apply, and you have a lot of lawyers, by the way, who will look around in these places to try to sue areas in order to get money, uh, which serves a good purpose while fattening their wallets, certainly. There are only a very small set of criteria that the government can legitimately make as an argument as to why a person loses any of their constitutional rights. A thinking a person may commit a crime, that they've got a lot of guns, and they say violent things, therefore they might be dangerous to people. It doesn't matter if they might be dangerous to people. I might be dangerous to people. You might be dangerous to people. Anybody could be dangerous to people. A person could snap. A person could have argument with their spouse tomorrow, go and shoot a bunch of people. A person could just get to, their mom dies, they hang themselves, they harm themselves or harm others. A person loses their job. Uh, the wrong person gets elected at the wrong time, just sends them over the edge. It is possible for that to happen. The idea that because a person has a certain political affiliation, which uses hyperbolically violent language, means that they are an imminent danger to themselves or others, such that the Constitution no longer applies, is asinine. Because the government could take that exact same criteria and, ex and basically extend that to anyone. What if the government were to say, because depressed people are more likely to commit suicide, anyone with clinical depression of any kind cannot own a firearm. It would be unconstitutional. You couldn't possibly make that argument in front of a court. What then is the difference? 
with that, with, I mean, the criteria is technically true. Yes, a depressed person is more likely to hunt to kill themselves with their gun. If that alone is not a pri proper criteria for the government to be able to use that as an excuse to disarm them, then why would it be a proper criteria by saying the person could reasonably see, be suspected to have a higher likelihood of committing an act of violence because they have multiple weapons and they say that they hate racial minorities? The same too, what if a communist group got together and they're constantly rambling about hanging the rich? That does not mean that they are in imminent danger of going to a rich neighborhood and actually hanging people. The idea of confiscating their rope, confiscating their, their, their twine because they might actually start to produce nooses, it wouldn't hold up. In the face of legal scrutiny, I don't see that this is going to work. The fact that the government would arbitrarily label a group terroristic or criminal in nature also doesn't apply. The fact that a person would be a member of a group known to commit crimes, unless they themselves are contributing in some material way, or, or, or in, in some uh, legitimate way, you can't simply say, well, this person has a crypt tattoo. The crypts sell drugs. Therefore, this person is a drug dealer, so we can take his handgun away. Try actually litigating a case like that in an actual court and see how far that argument gets. How is that any different from this? It, arguably, this is worse. This is a person, does this dude even have a criminal record? I didn't bother more than skimming through the article because <laughs> the basic gist of it is the government has come in at great risk, by the way, to the people sent. And this is a, a powder keg sort of situation. This is an accident waiting to happen, just like no-knock raids for weed dealers. It's a fucking accident waiting to happen when you do find the violent psychopath that opens fire because he thinks that some uh, enemy cartel has broken into his house and just guns down a dozen people. They go in, they take his weapons without due process. He's not under arrest, he's not suspected of any crime, they just decided that he might be a threat so they disarmed him. Doesn't make any sense. No, I don't care if he's from the Adam Waffen. I don't. I don't care if he's from the. I don't care if a person's a member of the Klan or the Black Panthers or any of a million other groups that I for personally politically don't agree with. That's like saying, well, Democrats are more likely to accidentally shoot someone because they're too dumb to field a weapon. Well, maybe so, but you can't disarm half the country because of that. Well, this person's more like, you could say the fact that a person has a gun makes them more likely to shoot someone, so we're just going to disarm everyone under the red flag laws. That may sound out there. How is that more out there from saying that this person, just by having firearms and having a political ideology the government doesn't like, it's really what it boils down to, means that they can or should be disarmed. The Second Amendment is very, very clear on who constitutes the militia and why they're allowed to have weapons. If this person honestly believes there may come a time, and this would be a screwy argument maybe to make, if this person has a deep-seated moral and political belief that political violence may force him uh, in, in, in part or in whole with other people to defend some homeland that's interiorly within the United States, that sort of is a proper function of the militia if you got a foreign invasion or something currently happening. Now, of course, the fact that a black person moves in next door is, you know, not a proper criteria for saying the U.S. has fallen, everything is anarchy, we're taking up arms. Regardless, though, the government doesn't get to make those arbitrary determinations. It does all of the time, and then 100 years later or 10 years later, litigation and legislation occur, things get shot down, new laws are made, reforms are made, Look, segregation was the name of the game in much of the United States for a very long time. While it was in effect, it was the law, it was to be obeyed as the law, it was seen as fine by many people within society, they had no problem with it. A lot of other people just said, well, you're rabble-rousing if you stand against it, even if you find it objectionable. Just move to a non-segregated state. Again, you're seeing the same arguments with red flag laws. Well, these are the dregs of society, so it doesn't matter so much. These are people who have violent uh, ideologies. Well, it doesn't matter if they have a violent ideology. Do you believe in disarming every Islamic person in the country? Do you believe in disarming Christians in the country who are too religious because they might nail bomb an abortion clinic? So, so what about people, what about based on race? Don't even get me started on race and crime statistics and what the government could potentially do with that. Maybe there's an argument to be made against any form of gun control here. I don't believe in gun control. It's, it's ludicrous. It's not working. It's not actually helping anybody. 
You've got countries in the world that are very well armed that have extremely low gun crime rates. By and large, by the way, 99% of the United States is a low gun crime zone. You go to a few blighted urban zones that especially have been hit hard by drug deals and cartels, that's where you find a lot of gun violence. And then you have, then you have, bless you, then you have suicide and you have accidental discharge and things like that. Yeah, you, negligent homicide certainly has a lot of the gun crime there is. And then you see the left to see them ramble about assault weapons so-called when those are responsible for a minority of gun crimes anyway. You're more likely to get shot with a handgun or a revolver. Uh, you have been for a while. You're more likely to get stabbed or beaten to death with a hammer. Why are people so worried about this? Why is there no red flag law for knives? Did When they went into his home, they took his guns, again, illegally, unconstitutionally. Argue you could even theoretically make, and this has happened actually, I think a few times, uh, depending on the state, if there's castle doctrine there, if he had opened fire, he might le legally have not even been held culpable, uh, <laughs> which would have been an extremely odd situation. Red flag laws do definitely contravene those stand your ground and castle doctrine laws in some situations, I would think. Be interesting to see if there's ever a court case about that. Hopefully not, because it'll involve probably a lot of death. Did they take his steak knives? Did they take his baseball bat? Did they confiscate his dog because it was big and scary and it was named Killer? Did they take all of his ropes and shoelaces away in case he starts making nooses? What about wood and, and gasoline? What if he started uh, building crosses and burning them on someone's lawn? Where do you draw the line? If you, can conf if you can say that a person is dangerous enough to take their guns away, then why not their knives? So the butter knives are gone, forks are gone, spoons, those, those you better let stay, otherwise there'll be the cult reaction maybe. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, again, where do you draw the line? Like this, this razor blade, uh, we gotta take that. And these batteries, he could make a taser, we're gonna take those. We're gonna take his car because he could drive through people. Oh, he has fertilizer? Well, he might be making a bomb. We're going to take that. This was just used as an, as an excuse probably anyway to gain access to his property illegally anyway, just to check and see if he was doing anything illegal like building bombs. This, probably just a, this is a way for the government to be able to no-knock investigate people without an actual proper warrant being issued based on a third-party complaint that can even come from the government itself. That's really what it looks like. It's a political hack attack. That's what it looks like to me. That's about all. Peace out.